Sean Bibb has been a, a television reporter since Moby Dick was a minnow. Okay. Giving a shout out to the retiring Leon Bibb today during a bill signing in Cleveland. But it didn't stop there. News 5's John Kosick has been looking back at the careers of Leon and Lee and uh, the governor turning the tables a little bit. Yeah, today. Leon Bibb thought he was sitting down with the governor to interview him one last time. He had his questions already, even got one in. But the governor, he had something else in mind. You've been doing this for um, a very long time, Leon, so I think now it's time for me to interview you. Oh, Governor. Okay. I no, got now it's time for me to interview you. Now, as a guest, you need to mind the person doing okay. the interview. Uh, I'll take okay. your questions. So, Leon, um, how does one get to the point where in a business as exciting as this, and you've seen everything over the many, many decades, yeah. uh, how do you feel about being able to move on? What do you expect you'll be doing? Oh, Governor, it's kind of bittersweet. I've done this so long, this is all I've ever really wanted to do. I mean, this was the plan from the sixth grade when I decided I wanted to be a journalist. And uh, it's, 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 it's hard to leave, but I know that it's time to move on and, and go to the next chapter of my life. So it's been a wonderful career of talking to people like you, interviewing people like you for the last 38 years in Cleveland and wow. mo well more than 40 in the state of Ohio when you put them all together. As an African American, you had to be one of the pioneers in television, mm -hmm. particularly as a news anchor. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did that feel like? There was an amount of uh, awe in it all. And uh, I remember when I got promoted to the Monday through Friday position down in Columbus in the mid-70s, late 70s, when I got promoted to Monday through Friday, 6 and 11, so many religious organizations and, and, and African-American organizations and other organizations as well had tributes for me. And every weekend I was out getting an award and people were telling me, especially people older than I was, saying, son, you represent us. And I felt like I felt like Jackie Robinson. Now, I was appreciative of the promotion, but at the same time, Governor, like Jackie Robinson, I had to hit the ball, run the bases. I had to do all the things that I'm supposed to do and deal with the, an amount of pressure of being the first. When I had an opportunity to take a look at your whole career, there are a couple things that really stood out. One of them was the fact that you had an opportunity to be up close and personal covering the life of Martin Luther King. Why don't you say a little bit about that? I, it was in 1965. I was working as, a, as, a, as an intern for the Cleveland Call and Post newspaper after my junior year in college. And uh, my, my editor, Al Sweeney, said, Dr. King is going to be at East 40th and, 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 and Scoville Avenue. And the crowd is already gathered. And I'm at the back of the crowd. So I said, uh, uh, I got to get up front because I got to get pictures of Dr. King. And they said, young man, you, we've been here all day long. You have to stand in the back here with us. It's first come, first serve. And I said, well, what do I do now? This is my first time. I says, I'll tell them I'm a reporter. I says, I'm a reporter for the Call and Post. And the, and the people parted <laughs> like the Red Sea. They parted. And I walked right up to the front. I said, let him up front. This is a reporter. And I've been using that line ever since. You, you take a man as a brilliant uh, communicator like Dr. King, yeah. and you, you put beside him somebody who didn't say much, but you had a great opportunity to interview him, one of Ohio's greatest heroes, Neil Armstrong. How did that interview happen? And tell us a little bit <laughs> you, about, you about know, Neil Armstrong. You, you know it all. He was, uh, this was in 19, this would have been in 19... 79 or 1980 years after the historic walk on the moon that was 1969 and uh, this was his first major interview ten years later I had a question that I wanted to ask him but I was kind of afraid to ask it take us to and the I home. said I said uh, uh, Colonel Armstrong I don't know if it's true or not but I had heard and I don't know where I heard it that Charles Lindbergh, years after his historic flight across the Atlantic Ocean in 1927, years later, when his airplane, the Spirit of St. Louis, was hanging from the rafters of the Smithsonian Aerospace Museum, that he hid in a restroom that night as they closed and bribed the night watchman to get a ladder 
and let him climb up and sit in his airplane for the first time decades later. I don't know if that's true or not, Colonel Armstrong, but Apollo, what's left of Apollo 11, the capsule, is hanging in the rafters next to the Lindbergh airplane. Would you like to do what I heard Lindbergh did and sit in Apollo 11 again? And he said, sir, I've heard that story. Your story is true. And yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole world looked at me and they said, how did you know that? How did you know that? I said, I don't know how I knew it. I don't know where I heard it first. Awesome story. We've all been telling a lot of stories and sharing our well wishes with Leon and Lee here at News 5 and would like you to do the same. Check out the News 5 Cleveland Facebook page to share your thoughts on the retirement of these two Cleveland News legend and on our News 5 app. You can see the governor's complete interview with Leon Bibb. It was an awesome opportunity. Right. He, he threw me a curveball. <laughs> wow. I've you... seen I've seen politicians dance before politically, <laughs> but I've never been asked, you know, questions by the politician himself. What was it like to be on the other side of that microphone? I wanted to say, what are you going to ask me? What are you going right. to ask me? <laughs> Don't ask me that. Don't ask me that. Let me see the questions first. <laughs> yeah, let me see. No, it was fine. We had a good time. We had a good you time. You hit it out of the park as always, well, Leon. Well, you fun. are a great communicator. Well, I'm yes, just, just trying ever. to, well, I'm just trying to tell the story. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we do. Lee, Lee and Leon, the, the, you know, I know, I, I, always, I, know. You know, I always, I know, we're, we're walking each other out the door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wanted our promotion department to promote it as Lee and Leon. Lee and Leon. Aww. You know, years ago. But 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 no, you you're the community. We're all communicators. Yeah. That's what we all do, really. Oh, what These a privilege folks up it here. Is too. All of everybody yeah. up here, everybody at this station is a communicator. We're that's what we're trained to do, what we're paid to do. It's our passion, to it too. Well. Yeah, it's my passion. Definitely awesome. a pioneer. We appreciate it. Nicely yeah. done, John Kosick. Yes. He might have had something to do with that. John was behind <laughs> the secret mission governor. of getting the governor here you up. to interview me. <laughs> I had to tell Leon, I'm like, just, just go with the flow. If any, you know. Go with the flow. You know, I got this list of questions. Again, yeah. I want to ask you about this and this and that. Never got to them. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yeah, what I have to say is kind of anticlimactic. It's going to be cool overnight. Back to you, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, follow me over here.